So we're going to talk about the senior checklist and it's kind of an easy way for students to uh, break down their year as they prepare to do college, um, whether it be university, community college, private college, or even some other post-secondary options, maybe a trade school or, or other cosmetology school, something like that. Um, so these are, some of them will be more specific to college or universities and some of them are just kind of general ideas of when to get some things done. So I'm going to start with September and we really encourage students to create a college going email and notebook to help them keep track of all of their correspondence and the email is especially important because um, if students use their high school email then uh, eventually that email goes away and they might have information in that email that they needed. So I try to talk my students and my own children into creating what I call a college going email where maybe it would be Avery goes to college or um, you know they can just use their name and but make a Gmail account or other account that's just real simple and doesn't have a lot of other emails coming into it because I've dealt with a lot of students that have like three or four different emails and they can never find the specific email that they're looking for. So if they have a, if they have one that just their core, their correspondence for college can go into, that makes finding their information a lot easier. They can find their login information and all of that stuff when they get gets down to all of that when it comes to preparing to be set for college. Um, another one is to make a master calendar with all the deadlines and I would keep that in my notebook um, and that way they can put in scholarship deadlines, um, school deadlines, application deadlines because some schools have different deadlines than others and it's nice to have a master calendar with everything in there that they're interested in and um, helping them keep on track. And then another master document that I encourage all seniors to make is um, a document with all of the essay questions they've been answering for not only um, applying to school, but whenever they fill out an essay. The other option is to make photocopies of these and keep them in your notebook because a lot of the scholarships will ask repeat questions, the same questions, excuse me, or similar. And if you have an answer already written up, you just have to tweak it a little bit and then it makes your scholarship applications a lot faster if you keep this master document that we're encouraging students to do. Um, another thing that we encourage students do, to do is and, and also to teach them about is making sure that their online accounts are cleaned up. So if they have a Facebook or Twitter or, or uh, Instagram or TikTok account, making sure the content that they're displaying on those are um, appropriate. And that will really move into their uh, years after college as well. So, you know, you don't want to have content on those accounts that could scar you or, or do some harm if you're looking to be accepted or getting a job or any of those types of things. So then also we encourage um, students at this point if they feel like they need to take their SATs over again or maybe they decide they want to take them to sign up and do it. Again, I'm going to um, say that in 2021, the majority of universities and colleges are not requiring an SAT score to be admitted. So this is for the fall of 2021. So um, right now, they're just telling students because of the, the uh, amount of, what am I trying to say, the difficulties that it is to, to get to the SAT centers and take the SATs that they're waiving that for the 2021 or 2021 year, yeah, fall entering. And then yes, I want to I wanna just butt in real quick on that yeah. topic. Um, even if the student finds out that the college they want to attend is uh, waiving the need uh, for SAT or ACT for admissions, we still do recommend the students try to take one of those just because there are still scholarships out there that uh, may still request their scores for either one of those tests. Um, so um, even though some colleges will no longer require it, um, the student, if they can, still take it it may still benefit it may still be in their benefit to to have those scores on hand in case they want to apply to a scholarship that requires it thank you yes that's exactly what i was trying to say <laughs> ask uh ask your counselors in september to help you uh, request a fee waiver for when you are applying to school um so if you uh qualify for reduced or free lunches you can um 
have these fees for your applications waived and um, counselors at your school should have these applications to have those fees waived. And you have, I think with each, each student gets like five waivers. So um, they can submit five, up to five applications and have the fee waived on those. Um, also, it's a good time to start making a list of all your accomplishments and activities that you've done in the past because when it's time to fill out applications and scholarships, sometimes it's really hard to remember everything. And if you start working on that document ahead of time, and then as you remember things, the students can, can keep adding them to that document. And that would kind of go along with the master document with their essay questions, a master document of all their accomplishments and activities is a really good thing to have on hand and ready to go. And I uh, highly recommend starting on that as soon as possible. Um, also, the Oregon Promise, you can start, it opens in September, so you can start filling out that application. It's very simple. There is a June 1 deadline, but there are some, um, some information out there that the sooner you get that filled out and turned in, the better off you could be if funds are limited that year. And then also, um, make sure and check with high school counselors to confirm that, this, that students are on track for graduation. Those ugly surprises in the spring are not fun. When students and counselors realize that, oh, you missed a credit here or a half a credit here, or you didn't fulfill this requirement for graduation and now you're scrambling to get it done, plus do all your college stuff. Um, so it's really nice to encourage seniors to go in and at least check in and make sure everything's set and that they're on track for graduation. So that's a lot to do in October, but also you know, pretty easy list to check off on. And then October, we're gonna work on our fast fund or uh, depending on uh, which one you're filing for. Um, that opens on October 1st. Oh, I did this twice, list all accomplishments and activities in a document, just keep working on that in October. And then start working on your personal story because that's um, something that almost all applications or quite a few applications are gonna ask um, some type of a personal story from you. So. I always encourage students to make sure it's something unique that will make people remember you when they read it. Um, it's also a good time in October to start requesting letters of recommendation. And I encourage students to pick um, teachers or adults in their lives that you know have something, again, unique to say about them to help them stand out. Because it is a competitive world sometimes in, when you're applying for college and especially for scholarships. And to have these letters of recommendation that are written well and speak of the student's specific unique qualities and contributions um, helps out a lot. A generic letter of recommendation, you know, we all get tired of reading those. So we wanna hear specific unique things about the student. 